Hi there, welcome back. This video we're going to be going over how to do or how to calculate a chi squared or sorry, statistic. Now the question is two double heterozygotic pea plants with smooth yellow seeds were mated. So two double heterozygotic, that tells us they look like this. A, big A, little B, or sorry, big A, little A, big B, little B. So they roughly look like this. Now they were their progeny were and they had 328 of them were smooth, 99 of them were green, sorry, 328 of them were smooth, uh, smooth yellow, 99 were smooth but green, 96 were wrinkled and yellow, and 37 of the progeny were wrinkled and green. So the question is, what is the chi-squared statistic, or the value of it, and is independent assortment ongoing? Okay, so the first thing we need to do is figure out a ratio of what is expected. Now first off, if you added up all the offspring, you would get 560 total. This number is going to be used a bit later. Now you're crossing two double heterozygotic individuals. And if you know from experience with these Mendelian genetic problems, whenever you do that, you're always going to get a 9 to 3 to 3 to 1 ratio. And you can actually see that here. 9 out of three or nine to three to three to one. If you add up all of these here, you get, or three add three is six, add one is seven. Then if you add seven to the nine, you're getting, getting 16 total, right? That means there's a nine out of 16 chance if you just focus on the nine ratio right here. So what I'm showing right now is just a different way of interpreting the ratio. This nine here is representing this amount right here. Notice that 328 is the highest amount um, amount um, amongst all of the offspring right here. And 3 to 3, or 3 and 3. Notice that the 99 and the 96 are very close in number. That tells me that the three the threes here are both representing these two amounts of progeny. And the 1 is the lowest, therefore it's 37. So the entire purpose of the chi-squared statistic is to, is to figure out if the observed offspring, the, the amount we counted when we mated these two double heterozygotic individuals, is actually the proper amount that we would expect from a 9 to 3 to 3 to 1 ratio. So the first step you got to take is figure out the expected amount of progeny. To do this, we're going to be using the other logic that I showed you before. So 9 out of 16 multiply the total amount of progeny will give you the expected amount. So this multiply 560 will give you 315. So let me just draw a little thing there. So 315. And if you do 3 out of 16, which is the other one, multiply 560, you're going to get 105. And if you did that again, you're going to get another 105. And now if you do 1 out of 16, multiply 560, you'll get 35. So all of the numbers right here are the expected progeny based on the 9 to 3 to 3 to 1 ratio that's predicted by Punnett squares. Now we're going to check if the observed values, the ones we counted, are actually kind of matching up to the ratio of the expected using chi-squared statistics. So the next thing we want to do is figure out the difference between them. So we're going to do 328 subtract 315. That gives us a value of 13. Then you have to square this value. So let's call this D. This value right here is the difference in D. So when you square the D value, you're going to get 169. And let's do this for all of the all of the numbers right here. Now the next thing you want to do is take the D value that you calculated and divide it by the expected amount of progeny. So in this particular case, we're going to we're going to be doing 169 divided by how much we expected. We expected 315. And you're just going to do it for all of the ones down here. So for 36, you're going to divide it by 105. Okay, so now that you've done all that, the next thing you want to do is add up all of these values. And if you did that, you're going to get a value somewhere around 1.759. This is your chi-squared statistic. It's denoted as being x to the power of 2. This equals chi-squared. So the next part is to figure out if your observed value actually matches the expected values, or the expected amount of progeny. So we got the chi-squared statistic value of 1.759. Now to actually use the chart to figure this out, we're going to have to first find out the degrees of freedom. Now that just means you take the total amount of traits that you have and you subtract it by one. So how, first off, how many traits do we have? Well, we have one, two, three, four. We have four total traits that we're actually observing. So we do four, subtract one, three. Our degrees of freedom, also denoted as over here, you can see DF, 
So we have three degrees of freedom. So go down the rows until you see a three right here. So this is where you're going to be looking all along this row. Now you're going to, tr the goal is to try and find your value you, you figured out, 1.759. Now you're not going to find anything exactly like it. You have to find the closest amount. Now looking around, I see it's between these two values. So looking up here, you see that in here, this is where your probability is stated. So our probability is between 0.7 or 70% and 60%. So that's roughly, I'd say 65%. Now, we, d we know that the probability uh, is equal to 65% roughly. And what this probability is, is the likeliness that the, the observed values that you got are actually following the ratio and are the result from independent assortment. Now, a good rule of thumb is that when, if this probability here, if this percentage is ever less than 5%, the observed values, your observed progeny, are actually not independently assorting. There's something else going on that's affecting the traits. So whenever, but whenever it's above 5%, five, uh, 5%, like ours is, ours is 65, 60% 60 above 5%, tells us that yes, our observed values are, ex are expected and they're the result of like random chance or a ra an independent assortment. And that is the end of the video. If you have any questions, of course, feel free to ask in the comment section below and I'll do my best to answer you in a quick manner. And I, of course, I do hope you're having a fantastic day.